So here's another arrest, folks, that's making controversy. And he's a controversial character. Uh, there's good and bad things to say about this particular person. But again, the reason I'm covering this, the reason we're discussing this, the reason why this is such a vital issue is because of the circumstances of where we're living in, in this day and age. That if they're arresting journalists, if they're arresting uh, truth tellers that they're arresting investigators they're denying people the ability to express uh, their fundamental right of speech then this should this is part of that uh, conversation this is part of that discussion regardless how you feel about this so Reuters says that telegram CEO arrested over probe into child porn trafficking on application um Pavel Dervo, oh, let me let me make this a bit bigger here. So it says Pavel Dervo, the Russian-born founder of the messaging app Telegram, was arrested in France as part of an investigation into crimes related to child pornography, drug trafficking, and fraudulent transactions on the platform. French prosecutors said on Monday, French President Emmanuel Macron making his first official conf- confirmation of Dervo's arrest. Since he was detained at Le Bourget Airport outside Paris on Saturday evening, said there was no, no police in the arrest. Hmm, fishy. Despite many false comments online, he added the France uh, that France remains deeply committed to lawful free speech. Right off the bat, I'm already getting suspicious about this. And also, from how they're wording this, it makes it sound like he, the CEO, is getting arrested because of what users on the platform are using and abusing that platform for. So if that's the case, does that mean that every other social media tycoon from Mark Zuckerberg to Elon Musk to uh, Google to YouTube, to do they get arrested? for what users are doing on there like how does that work out or should we arrest politicians you know there's drug trafficking here in canada does that mean justin trudeau gets arrested because he's not controlling the drug traffickers like that's that's the that's the assumption i'm getting when reading that article the way they word it it sounds like they're arresting him for stuff that uh, people on that platform were doing, and they're not even going after those people. They're just going after the CEO. So again, all this sounds suspicious. And regardless of how you feel about this person, that's not the point that I'm making here. The point that I'm making here is that um, the matter, the the context of this is really suspicious. And the fact that they have to repeat themselves saying that there's no political motive and we're committed to free speech. Yeah, I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that for a second. So then um, this article appears. Oh, why is that? So why Telegram CEO Pavel Dervo arrest could weaken your online speech. Now, for those who don't know what Telegram is, Telegram it's kind of like, it's almost like a version of Twitter, but everything is encrypted. So it's a communication device or a communication app that people talk to each other using encrypted texts so that they can keep their conversation private. They can keep their conversation um, in the hands of each other and not have government organizations or spies or agencies intervene in that conversation that's why so many people and a lot of journalists use telegram because they don't want to get exposed they don't want to have this you know horrendousness of being blackmailed manipulated by the cia by the fbi by Mossad, by the mi6 that are going to scoop up that information and use to blackmail those journalists so that's that's what i'm seeing in this that they're arresting him um on, on on the notion that they think they're arresting him for this drug trafficking and child pornography. But at the same time, he also runs a huge platform. And considering the platform is encrypted and not uh, on the side of these government agencies, they're not bending the knee to them. 
they want to attack him. They want to go after him. And that's that's their whole pro- process. They try to manipulate. They try to bribe. They try to blackmail. They try to persuade those people. And if that doesn't work, then you either arrest them or you kill them. That's how these agencies operate, how they function. And to quote, the, to paraphrase Chuck Schumer, they have not wasted Sunday to take anyone down. And he's saying that to the president. So... If that, if that clues you in to how they function. So then this goes into this thread here by Megatron, um, which he points out that Pavel Dervo, founder and CEO of Telegram, was arrested today in France, and there's different charges against him. Telegram is the main source of information about the Israeli genocide and massacre in Gaza. Thousands of, view, uh, thousands of videos of Jews massacring children have been posted on Telegram channels by journalists living in Gaza. Israel is trying to stop that flow of information, and that is why it has killed over a thousand, uh, or sorry, over a hundred journalists in Gaza alone. So there's another tell of why exactly they're targeting the CEO of Telegram and why they're arresting him. That, hey, your platform is skeptical of this war and calling out the genocide for what it is and, and, and showing all these pictures. And again, if we if we want to use the logic that France is going with and uh, the pretty much the the, the establishment's going with, then they they'd be going after Zuckerberg. They'd be going after Elon Musk. They'd be going after uh, the folks at Google and, and YouTube. But they're not doing that. Why? Because they bend the knee to the establishment. They're, they're peddling their narratives. Unlike Telegram, that's actually cryptid, so that people are actually seeing what's in front of them. Like, like, like the whole notion is, they're afraid of truth tellers. They're afraid of people revealing the truth. They don't care if people lie. They don't care if people are criminals. But the worst thing for a person to be is to tell you the truth, to tell you exactly what is happening. Because how are they going to sell you the the genocide? How are they going to sell you this war if people constantly see pictures of dead babies and young women and and mothers and, and grandmothers being beheaded by the IDF? How are they going to sell you that war is good and war is defensible when you've massacred populations? Um. So also to add to the thread, it's it's pretty long here. Uh, the most accurate information about the situation on the ground in Ukraine comes out of Telegram. And NATO can't control it. So again, they want to say that this is not political, this is not about free speech, this is not about controlling narrative. But you're talking about the platform that's pretty accurate on Ukraine, pretty accurate on Israel pretty accurate on the world powers that be. Now, I can't confirm that because I'm not a Telegram user. I don't use that platform. But if you're having journalists using it because it's encrypted and they can actually share information that people like NATO and the CIA don't want to reveal to people, then you kind of have that assumption. You kind of have that, uh, you kind of have that moment to understand that they're going after this platform to try to silence out this platform. And of course, you go right to the CEO. You go right to the head of operations. Um, The biggest Wagner channels are on Telegram. In general, the best way to assess if a disinformation campaign is taking place is to check if multiple channels that are pro-Wagner or so have related. Many people use Telegram as their source of information because the information comes directly from the field. Many dead NATO soldiers appear on Telegram and the CIA and NATO command no longer hide their direct involvement in the war broke out in Russia. So there's another factor in why they got arrested. So methinks that the child porn uh, drug trafficking, as we've seen before in many occurrences of the CIA trying to, again, blackmail people, uh, was just a hoax. That's just them putting a front up to say, hey, this guy is so awful because of this. When 
they're the actually awful ones that this guy is just had created a platform to express ideas. And just like how they want to shut down Elon Musk for uh for what X is now, just like how uh even here in Canada they want to shut down Rumble. That was that was something to note that they that the government wanted to shut down Rumble because it was a place for people to express ideas they couldn't control over it like they did with YouTube. It's it's a matter of speech. It's a matter of narrative control because once they control the narrative, they control culture. They control countries. They can control populations. And they don't want to lose that control, so they have to go after these people. Um, here's a, a, it's also something else. Telegram did a lot of damage to the French army in Africa. The Africans organized all their protests, resistance, and everything else against the French occupation forces through Telegram. Russian mercenaries obviously use different platforms, but Telegram played for them an important role in accelerating the uh, deter uh, deterioration of France's military posture, especially in Africa. I think it's important to take into consideration when wondering why the French would get involved. And also, and I didn't even know about this, but apparently France, this city of love and romance and stinky cheese, and snails, um, apparently is a huge supplier of military arms around the world. France is known for weaponry. Yeah, the city of love. The city of love and lights and romance is one of the biggest exporters of military ammunition to these territories. So if that goes away, if you're going to challenge the... French uh, military industrial complex, of course, Macron, the neolib scumbag that controls it, is going to go after that person. Of course, the French would get involved if they realize that part of their economy of selling military-grade weaponry to slaughter more people overseas uh, gets in the way of that. Of course, they're going to go after that person. So that's something to note. Uh, the founder of Telegram has been detained by French intelligence services at Le Barret Airport in, in Paris while exiting a private jet. He is expected to be presented to a judge later this evening facing multiple charges according to TF1. Pres uh, potential charges include terrorism, drug-related offenses, complicity, fraud, money laundering, concealment, and possession of child exploita uh, exploitation content. The main concern of EU authorities regarding Telegram is its encrypted messaging. Their highest concern is the fact they can't access users' communication. So again, this all these charges sound like they were all fabricated to point the finger at this guy when really the true crime of this of what he committed is the fact that he's not giving up data to the intelligence agencies. He's not giving up your personal data to be exploited by the status quo, by the military industrial complex, by uh, heinous governments. That's, that's what I'm getting from this. And that seems more correct. That why would they go after this platform so aggressively um and why are they not going after the if they said that the somehow the users or the people on telegram are involved in terrorism drug related offensive complicity in that why aren't they going after them why are they going after the ceo of this major platform it's because they want to shut this platform down they want to take that data they want to shut it down and they want to blackmail the users to be complicit of their heinous criminal acts. Um, so here's him on Tucker Carlson expressing that same thing. So it says, in an interview with Tucker Carlson, uh, Dervo said that the last time he was in the United States, he brought an engineer from Telegram with him who his secret services tried to hire behind his back. So they, they love this platform so much. They love how encrypted and, and, and secret it is that Secret Service 
want to steal the engineer, the software engineer that created it. Like that's how private your conversations are. That secret service wants to use it. So, so they can keep privacy, but none of us get it. We don't have it. We don't, we don't have that right. We don't have rights anymore. It's all up in the air. And here's what he says. We get too much attention from the, the FBI, the security agencies, wherever we came to the U.S. So to give you an example, last time I was in, in the U.S., I brought uh, an engineer that is working for Telegram, and there was an attempt to secretly hire my engineer behind my back by cyber security officers or agents, uh, wherever they are called. The U.S. government should hire your engineer. That's my understanding. That's what he told me. To write code for them or to break into Telegram? They were curious to learn which open source libraries are integrated to the Telegram's app you know, on the client side. And they were trying to persuade him to use certain open source tools that he would then integrate into the Telegram's code that, in my understanding, would serve as backdoors would allow the U.S. government to spy on people who use Telegram. The U.S. government, or maybe any other government, because the backdoor is a backdoor, regardless of who is using it. That's right. And, and, and you're... That's a- so, the United States want to persuade his engineer and bribe him to work for them so that they can create a backdoor to surveil users on that platform. And because it's a backdoor, they they can then sell it to corporations. They can sell it to other countries. They can get MI6 involved in this. They can sell it to Mossad. Mossad can then go search through uh, content on Telegram. They can sell it to Ukraine. They can sell it to whoever they want to surveil on whoever they want. And then they can use that information to manipulate, blackmail, persuade, or potentially penalize people for revealing things, revealing the horrendousness of these agencies. Anyone that gets in the way of the criminal uh, cabal of these agencies, of the governments, of corporations, of 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 the status quo of the establishment, they can then take that information that was encrypted and used to exploit you. That's what the U.S. government was doing with this. So again, all this stuff about sex trap, I don't know if it's true or not, but it sounds like to me that that's not the focus of this. The focus of this is he has a platform. It's a private platform. People are using uh, encrypted messaging so they can communicate with each other and they want access to it. Just like how they get angry with Elon Musk on X. It's not the fact they're angry at Elon Musk because Elon Musk was a hero of this until he decided, hey, I'm going to buy Twitter. And then they hated him so much. Why? Because Elon Musk wasn't going to bend the knee so much to the establishment. He eventually kind of did in certain ways because that's how you become a billionaire. That's how you still maintain your success in this horrendous world. But he hasn't bent the knee so much that the old Twitter used to do. So that's why they're angry at him. That's why they're angry at this guy. They're angry at so many people because they can't get control. They can't gain that control, that thought process, so that they can manipulate and use them and abuse them as their puppets. Um, And also here, so this goes on to say in his... Famous photo of Telegram founder Pavel Durvo giving Putin his middle finger. (laughs) You'd think he'd be the headliner of the DNC at this point. You know, you gave Putin the, 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 you flipped him off. Wow. That's celebrity status right there uh, for the West establishment. Um, In 2011, Durvo said the Russian government had requested him to cancel the accounts of anti-government figures on his social media platform. Dervo did not want to follow, but also publicly re- uh, released this photo of raising the middle finger to Putin in the media, which he received cheers from the West. 
After the 2014 uh, Ukrainian coup, Dervo refused to provide the Russian government with information on users involved in the Ukraine colorful revolution. In the same year he left Russia, claiming that Russia was unable to keep up with the information age, shortly after he acquired French and UAE citizenship and stated that he had no plans to return to Russia. Today, Dervo was arrested by France on charges of using the platform to support terrorist activities and pedophilia after refusing to provide user information to the United States and Israel, facing 20 years of imprisonment. So that seems to be the more likely outcome, is that he's not revealing information of users to these agencies, and the agencies told their government overlords to, hey, go arrest this guy. Because they all work in the same loop. They're all in the same circles. They're all evil, psychotic, psychopathic, warlords, warmongers, bloodthirsty, curdling, heinous monsters that just want to beat each other up for for sinister control. Uh, Dervo helped Ukrainian stage a coup d'etat in 2014. I didn't even know about this. I didn't know about this. Um... So, again, regardless of how you feel, and I know people have certain certain notions about this guy. Like, I don't like that he, he was part of this coup. I don't like the fact that he took over uh, another country's government. I don't like that. Um, but the point of the story and the point that I'm revealing to you is the fact that they are arresting the CEO of a platform of a social media platform specifically because they can't garner control of that platform. And that isn't right. That that's the principal factor of this is that you're creating a platform uh, with users on it. That's encrypted messaging. And the fact that the CIA, the FBI want to manipulate this guy, they, you know, took the software engineer and tried to bribe him, tried to persuade him to turn the other way. Um, he refused. And now they're arresting him. This obviously is because of the fact that he's not re- giving up information. And you still have, in theory, you still have the right to privacy. In theory. Because the, this day and age, um, with everything that's going on and how social media uh, gets these government contracts, is involved with the intelligence agencies, involved in uh, the military industrial complex. It doesn't seem like that. It doesn't seem like you don't you don't have privacy. Um, and clearly they are serious <laughs> in trying to get as much information on regular people as possible, including arresting the CEO. And like I said, it's not like they're going after uh, Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg or, or Google or people on Reddit. It's not like they're going after them for the exact same activities you probably see on their platforms. So that's how you know this seems like a, to- a, a, to- a total scam to go and silence out a platform. That's what it seems like to me. And I don't like him for doing the Ukraine coup, which I didn't even know that was part of his. Um, and I know there's other things that you may disagree with, but again, you, that's not the point of all this. You have to, you have to look at the big objective picture of this. You have to look overall, the general picture of this is a war against information. This is a war against, uh, people expressing their opinions and how we evolve in society is that we communicate. We have different opinions, communicate and evolve our conversations. And if the governments, the intelligence agencies, the corporate stature, if they don't want us to do that, then we don't evolve. Society doesn't evolve. And we pretty much go back to the peasant days of us living in dirt huts and and the lords having control over everything, which is what we have right now. So this, again, that's why I bring this to attention. That is why this is such a big deal. And if, it, if, if you know, you don't say anything for this or you don't say anything for Richard Metters or you don't say anything for Julian Assange, then who's going to speak up when it comes to you? 
That's the big thing. 